This is a millipede. Thursday morning. So what are you most excited for? The sun! Everything. We've been on a plane, zip lining. No snow. No snow and no cold. My absolute favorite part of this. Day one was simple. Get 42 people from Ellsworth, Wisconsin to Costa Rica. I'm so cold. <laughs> temperature when we left Ellsworth was in the single digits. We connected in Toronto and wound up not getting to our hotel until almost midnight. The group was exhausted, but when we woke up, the hassle of an entire day flying had melted away with the morning sun. It was time to officially start exploring Costa Rica, and that meant getting to know our tour guide. Um, Freddy Davila from Costa Rica. I just kept exploring and they found here, you know, the place that they were looking for. How long have you been a tour guide? Um, I started it in uh, 2005. Yeah. As soon as I finished high school. Wow. Yeah, that was yeah how I started to work in the weather conditions that allows them to have. Our first expedition was a quick bus ride up into the mountains from our hotel to the Doka Coffee Plantation. The Vargas family has been growing organic coffee here since 1940. Very small. They work with gas in temperatures about 250 Fahrenheit. This is the oldest wet mill in Costa Rica, where the entire process, from harvesting to roasting, is done without electricity. They literally lay the beans out in the sun to dry. Needless to say, our group was most eager to taste what Doka had to offer. A lot of coffee was purchased that morning. The best part about the coffee plantation was the chocolate coffee beans. Even though Costa Rica is only a third of the size of Wisconsin, the mountainous terrain makes even short trips adventurous. We made a pit stop at this small waterfall. We also got to witness firsthand the expertise of our bus driver. My name is Eladio Enrique Quiroz Gomez. Soy de Costa Rica. Tengo 32 años de manejar autobús. This turn is referred to as El Codo de Diablo, the Devil's Elbow. It's a 180 degree turn going sharply downhill. Y el currículo mío ha sido pues intenso en este en estos 17 años que tengo de trabajar para esta compañía. And we're doing it in a 45 foot coach bus. Hey. Maestro! <laughs> we pulled off for lunch at a small riverside restaurant. The food during the entire trip was exceptional, and this lunch was what we needed to get us through the last part of our day. We arrived to La Fortuna, where we'd be spending the next two nights in the afternoon. La Fortuna is a small town located at the foot of a volcano called Arenal. After centuries dormant, Arenal unexpectedly erupted in 1968, wiping out an entire nearby town. Freddy took us on what would be the first of many intense hikes, up the old 1968 lava flow towards the base of the volcano. We walked for almost two hours on uneven, rocky trails but Freddy made it worth our while with his vast knowledge of the Costa Rican ecosystem. That is the um, banana flower, actually. I realized that I was not a, an indoor guy. And yeah. simple words, let's say, these are farmer ants, right? I needed to pay for college, right? So I started to look for a job, and I found a job in a hotel. And um, they have like a little part right there. And, um, you know, the, the used to have like self-guided tours and one time I had to guide one of the tours and I found that it was a nice thing you know a nice way to teach and uh, since that very single moment um, 
I realized like, wow, there's another way to teach. So it's like teaching, but more fun. But more fun, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We'd finally made it to the top of the lava flow, and the view was incredible. So Rafe, how was the hike? It was pretty good, actually. You know, it was, just, it was grand. <laughs> Are you tired right now? No, not even a little bit. Rafe, when's the last time we drank water? Breakfast this morning. The hike back down was just as challenging, but we were up for it because it was the only way we could get back to our beds for the night. The skies were always clear in the morning. Other than being a little hot for what March 1st usually offers us back north, the weather was perfect for a busy third day. We would spend the entire day outside, and most of it in the water. We started the morning by kayaking in Lake Arenal, a large man-made freshwater lake that hugs its namesake volcano. How's the water? So our tour guide, Freddy, just dumped his kayak. Un tico verdadero, no? Liam went like this, the Fred's bow, and then put the ball in the top. Oh! Mike, ¿qué pasó? Me caí! Sí! Se cayó, pero. Está profundo, no? Como cuatro metros. Cuatro metros aquí? Sí, poquito. No, no. Like two meters. You know, it was all Tio's fault. Tio? Yeah. Tio, what did you do? I don't. I don't doubt that, actually. He kept a good sense of humor about it, though. Get him, Mike, get him! We believe in you. Usted lo puede. Palante, palante, my. Oh, the rescue boat just got here for Freddy. Rescatelo, no más. Then we all decided to jump in. How far? About the kayaking, probably when we tip Mr. Williams in the water. Oh, again! <laughs> My favorite thing today was the kayaking because well, I really love kayaking and I was with Maggie and we were just a power team. I mean, we were just chugging. We ran into like 12 people, but that's okay. We didn't have a hole in our boat or anything. And I jumped in the water, and I even got back in all by myself, so it was a really great, really great day. GoPro, stop recording. Back on shore, we got our first encounter with some Costa Rican wildlife. <laughs> oh my god, they're like coming from everywhere. They just all attack us. <laughs> They're actually supposed to be really nice. Like, they're usually pretty good. Don't throw it over. Oh, yeah. oh. oh. Part two of our day was a journey to find the famous La Fortuna waterfall. We could see and hear it from a distance, but now we had to get there, which meant hike number two for the trip. This hike was straight downhill to the river, 420 steps in all. Like everything else though, the workout was worth it. couldn't swim at the waterfall because of rocks, but downstream a little ways were natural pools where the water was perfect to jump in and see some fish. The trek back up the hill to the bus, though, really did feel like over 400 steps. Thankfully, there were well-placed benches for those who needed the rest, as well as plenty of water fountains back up at the top. Oh, 
After lunch, the group had some free time to explore the town, relax at the park, buy stuff, or watch soccer. Our day of water was winding down with tranquility as we visited one of La Fortuna's many natural hot springs. Don't worry, they're alive, just having a breath-holding contest. Meanwhile, the others were basking in the warm waters of the hot springs. Each pool at the resort had a different temperature, based on how close the water was to the magma from the volcano underground. I can't breathe, let me go! After another busy day, everyone was ready for bed, knowing that tomorrow was going to be just as jam-packed. Day four saw us leaving La Fortuna, headed southwest into the mountains, to the town of Santa Elena, where we would spend another two nights. We drove around Lake Arenal, where we had been kayaking the day before. Once off the highway, we stopped to take a break, and there was a local soccer game going on right across the street. And we would need the man to get us up to the mountain safely. The way up featured narrow, winding dirt roads. Me gusta mucho trabajar con con guías educacionales, más que todo este de IF, que se relaciona uno mucho con los chicos para que ellos vean lo que es pues la naturaleza y le tomen cariño a, a lo que es la naturaleza. This one bridge in particular featured a 90 degree turn on each end. And of course, like many in Costa Rica, it's a one lane bridge. Easy as uno, dos, tres, no? The evening was spent either touring a local farm or exploring Santa Elena on our own. So yesterday we had some free time and we went to the town Monte Verde and we went to some shops bought some local food, had some ice cream, and then we went on a scavenger hunt and learned a bit about the town. Like, what are some tourist things to do here? What are some common jobs of people and animals that people look for? The sugar cane was my favorite part of all time because it was kind of like sweet. So that was pretty fun. We also got to feed goats and see pigs. Milk a cow, that was pretty interesting. My first time milking a cow. It's really weird. <laughs> day five was easily our most adventure-packed day, as well as, for a lot of us, the most memorable day. We started out with a hike, our third so far, this one through the Monte Verde Cloud Forest Reserve. The cloud forest is a special ecosystem that produces its own microclimates. The heavy tree cover and unique weather patterns keep this part of the mountain in a constant state of foggy dampness. There was still plenty to see, however, and Freddie never passed up a chance to show us something new. The vegetation here is a lot denser, right, than um, in La Fortuna. That is actually what makes one of the main things. What do you know about ferns? Not much. How long do you think they've been on Earth? Longer than the Right? When you see ferns like this, right, it's a sign that the forest has similar conditions to what they used to have. See? Oh, they, they glow at night. Oh, that one's green. Yeah. Yeah. See? The tortoise beetle. How many billions of years old is here? Uh, 4.6 billion years old. That's how old that fern is. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. I don't get why any animal needs more than four legs. Okay. I have a millipede right there. Oh. Stick your finger right there. Slowly, slowly. Our hike back down the trail slowly brought us out of the mist and onto the next, most intense part of our trip. Zip lining, the mountains. There were two macaws waiting to greet us. First, we had to go over safety instructions. I don't. Is there a red light on? Only a few people in the group had ever been zip lining before, 
and none had ever done anything quite this hey, hey, hey. Ready? Let's go. So naturally, there were apprehensions. Vámonos. But all 42 of us ultimately decided to give it a try. It was crazy how fast we went. And how close to the trees we were. And how loud it was. The views, though, could not have been better. And as quickly as you got going, you stopped. <laughs> My favorite part about zip lining would have to be the hike and the view. Because it was quite the hike. It was all uphill, and each time it got harder and harder, but then it was worth it all. Is this a double person one? Those personas? No! Okay. Go! Go to the left! Honestly, you can't really describe it without doing it yourself. Listo? Listo! Vamos! Vamos! Que venga de todo el mundo Que me llegue en la botella Que me salga Zip lining, that was so dope! It was awesome, like the last one where you just got to look down and it was like, you're so high in the air that if your zipline snapped, you'd die. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. This one was the longest one, and the later one was the shortest one. Yeah, it was very high. When you come in, you it's really loud, you can hear anything. Then you come in. Some preferred to come in nice and slow. Not Selena, though. How was it, Maggie? It was awesome! I was a little scared for zip lining because I'm terrified of heights. But then you get up there and, like, it's just peaceful and calm. And it's just so beautiful. After lunch at our hotel, we had to sharpen up on our soccer skills for the evening and what would be the most genuine and, in my opinion, real part of our trip. We visited the local Santa Elena High School, where we would see dances performed by the Costa Rican students. There was a language barrier, so someone had to translate. Grace volunteered to be our MC for the evening. From the province Cartago is very elegant. The costumes and dances were all in the Costa Rican classical traditions, nothing like what we see in the United States. Then they brought out these huge, weird masks, with everything representing some cultural story. The kids just kept trying to scare us, though. <laughs> then, surprisingly, it was our turn. Also, like, brought us out onto the floor to dance with them. After a quick tutorial, we did a couple dances together as a large group. With some quick thinking, our students decided to show the Costa Ricans some American dances. Don't worry, they stuck to the classics. fun to notice like the similarities between the Costa Rican kids and us just because like even though we're different we are definitely all the same in the fact of being like a stereotypical teenager.
while the dance party continued off to the side. Costa Ricans never say no to a pickup soccer match. It was the perfect way to cap off a truly unforgettable night. That school visit wasn't planned either. Freddie saw how culturally engaged our group was and made it happen almost on a whim. And having been there, I know that these are the memories that will ripple through our students' lives the longest. Thanks, Fred. We left Santa Elena in the morning and trekked down the mountains toward, finally, the ocean. This area, but we still have around 25% of the exports and imports of Costa Rica are done. Um, Everything was dry on the way down which made us even more excited to see the ocean and eat ice cream. It's a, some sort of, a, um, how do we say, like snow con, right? That is called Churchill in our country. See? So, well, condensed milk, okay? They add more ice. And once they have these three layers of ice, two levels, one of condensed milk, the other one powder milk, my friends, they will uh, yeah, yeah, add yeah. strawberry syrup, they could have uh, um, orange syrup, coconut syrup, whatever flavor you guys want that they have right there available. We had two stops before we got to our hotel. The first one was a riverboat wildlife tour. We were paired up and given several bird species to identify from the boat. The winners got a prize at the end of the trip. Or could be the easiest, I don't know. See, so let's see how it goes. And uh, remember the prize is a surprise. We have a large white bird. Oh, there are four species actually. There's a, a wide, uh, large bird that the feathers look like it, it is wet in a dress. We motored out to the river delta to see what else we could spot. His name is Basilis. Oh, brown basilis. That lizard is the one that runs on water. Yeah, that is because the mangroves, they, as they absorb water, remember, for the nutrients, they are... We all knew what they really brought us on this boat to see, though. Any volunteer? No. big even back on land, there was plenty to see. But just like this drifting seed from a tree, we were on to our next stop. A nature park, featuring an aerial tram tour of the treetops. The trams moved very slowly, and each car had its own tour guide to take us up into the canopy. For most of these trains that you see right now are growing back for a second time. That is a wild cashew tree. Cashews are in the same family of trees that poison ivy. Balsa wood will grow so fast that they can grow 60 feet in 10 years. Wow! Pura wow. vida! <laughs> nice! 80% of the sunlight will barely reach some parts of this forest. Some of these trees here can reach a maximum height inside. This is the Yama. Yama. This is the Yama. So this area is very, very popular to practice parasailing. People jump in those mountains in front with the parachute. At the top, we made a very slow 180 back down to the park. The ride down offered views of the mountains we had just left earlier that day. And we really got a sense of how high up we were, looking down at some of the biggest trees we had ever seen. The constant hum of the cicadas kept us company as the trams slowly unloaded, one at a time. 
We weren't done yet, though. The rest of the park had a lot to offer and learn about the coastal ecosystem. Some of them, if you touch those hairs, those hairs are irritating. They will cause some very irritation. Mm. Best case scenario, you will have a Our brains hurt from learning so much at the park. And with it being spring break, after all, it was time to get to the ocean. We spent the next two nights in Hakko. That's J A C O. Hakko. A beautiful coastal city with some of the best beaches in the Western Hemisphere. And our hotel happened to be right on one of them. Why are you biting me? We took a short bus ride to one of Costa Rica's 32 national parks, Carrara. Okay, so uh, my friend told me that we have one and a half hours to do our walk. So here's the thing. Uh, we're going to split the group. Okay, me and my friend, we're going we're gonna to take it. We're going to try to show you some stuff. We're going to start the trail over here. We're going to do uh, three trails. We're going to try to do like half of each, each loop. The first trail of our fifth Costa Rican hike was unpaved, wild, and provided some challenging terrain. Being in a drier climate, though, with plenty of morning shade, made everything okay. Okay guys, right now we have Scarlet Macau. That's the, that's the common name of the, of, the, of the bird. In Spanish, we call it Guatamayo. The real name, the Latin name is Ara Macau. This is a monogamous animal. Do you guys know what that means? It's gonna work. And, uh, but the, what we're gonna do here is very relaxing because it's beautiful, it's super flat, plus we are in the middle of the one of the uh, primary forests, man. So this is awesome. I hope that you guys enjoyed it, okay? The second trail was flat and paved. It also had corporate sponsors who give money to help preserve the national parks, which we thought was interesting. Everything in Costa Rica truly does revolve around the environment, and everyone pitches in to help keep it enjoyable. Another thing we noticed on this trail was the ants. And it could easily go up to the very top, wow. right? But they have a system of tunnels mm -hmm. that uh, connects them with this um, exit. Why? When they throw stuff uh, away, uh, they're um, throwing, you know, fungus, bacteria that it's right there. Uh, um, this one up here is a beast. It's like killing everything. <laughs> and he only eats their heads. Hmm. Well, they gotta eat too, I yeah. guess. We also saw this tree that had a huge base and enormous roots. We're talking about bromelids and stuff. We have 217 percent of bromelids and they're amazing because everything is a circle. Something that you gotta have to understand is that everything in the forest is connected. Mother nature is perfect. Don't, don't waste anything. Everything helps everything. Everything means life. I couldn't help but think of the poem on the sign back at the park entrance. I fly far away, 
over the vast plains, like the rain, like winter's final bell, like a bird. Hold the beat. It was almost 100 degrees out by the time we got to the beach, but that didn't matter. It was time for a lot of us to take our first ever swim in the Pacific Ocean. It's like eating 40 McDonald's fries right now. <laughs> <laughs> Back on shore, Freddy had brought some snacks. But we found some of our own, too. Knowing that probably nobody had ever tried fresh, right off the tree coconut juice, Mr. Williams and I got to work. All you need is a long stick, or this dead driftwood tree, to knock down a few coconuts. What's this? Three, two, one. What's this? Two, one, two, three. Then there are a couple ways to open them. You can smash them on a rock, or cut them open with a big knife. Oh, is that the nut in the middle? Yep, you gotta crack that. So there we oh! go. I'll take a big swig, dude. Bro, there's a lot of juice in there. Okay, go. Alright. Most of them even liked it. After the sunburn made getting back into the water almost impossible for most students, we decided to hike along the rocky coast and check out some nearby coves. For the sake of our skin, we got out of the sun and went to lunch at a local seafood place, which wasn't without some extra company. This lunch, just like all the food, was incredible. We walked around downtown Hakko on our way back to the hotel, where we forgot how sunburned we truly were and stayed outside at all costs. So did the iguanas, too. Once it hit the students that this was our last day with the water, most decided to hang out by the pool. Then a group of girls got their hands on the camera. And this happened. Okay, ready? What's that, Mr. Williams? How has been your trip? <laughs> How has been? Interview right now. Go. Has been has been. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> As we took in one last ocean sunset, we couldn't help but notice how relaxed everyone was. We were a long way from Wisconsin, and a far cry from anything that had been in our minds prior. It was time to officially say goodbye to Hako and to the beaches. We had one final stop though on our trip, Sarchi. All the sugar that um, you guys have seen in all the restaurants, in all the hotels and uh, different places, it comes from Naranjo. The name Naranjo um, comes from well back in time in uh, um, 1700s. Uh, We drove over the Tarcoles River, where we had our riverboat tour two days prior, just to see if we could see anything. Oh, 
Sarchi is considered one of Costa Rica's great artisan towns and is home to a lot of craftspeople, like the ones who built this beautiful church back in 1949. The town is also famous for building ox carts. The town plaza boasts this magnificent handcrafted ox cart, the world's largest. Sarchi is one of only a few places left on earth that still make ox carts in the old tradition, and we got a tour on how they're built. And now let me tell you that Sarchi, our hometown has been recognized especially because the use and the construction of the ox carts. For us, this is a very important vehicle. Please, you can use that way over there to the main entrance of the workshop. First we have the metallic hole for the center. This is the metallic piece goes in the other side. We stay both to pass through the wall and tie up the wheel from the center. Very well. Very well. There's no electricity to operate the machinery. Everything is done with hydropower. This giant water wheel powers the whole shop, and it is loud. So thank you. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope you like the information. Thank you. Six hours. Six hours? Six hours. ¿Y cuántos años lleva usted en pintar? Uh, ¿Toda la vida o? Uh, 37 años. We shopped in the artisanal shop where the local crafters sell their goods. And then it was time to start the last leg of our trip, back to San Jose. Groups had some time to explore the city on their own, but we made sure to get to bed plenty early because it was going to be an early morning to catch our flight back home. No, bro, time. <laughs> Too early in the morning? Too early. Even though it's your birthday. We had time for one final kumbaya. <laughs> what did you think of our group? <laughs> Great group, actually. I mean, I, I have to... Thank you very much for being who you are. Right, and for making this trip my uh, friends a memory for uh, both of us here. This is one of the groups that um, you wish stays with you for a longer time. We have a person that um, it's been doing great since day number uno, right? A person that it's, I mean, has have got our lives on his hands. See? So I guess Eladio did a super good job doing the entire trip, right? So let's give a big applause for our friend Eladio. No puedo recordar es un grupo tan puntual como este que ando en los 12, 13 años que tengo para trabajar para IF. Este ha sido el grupo más puntual que. ¿En serio? De, de todos los grupos. De todos los grupos que he trabajado, me imagino que es que la escuela donde están es es igual. Todos. My favorite. It's like seeing um, students coming out of their bubble, right? Like trying new things, and, and after they try these new things, you know, getting comfortable with what they're doing. I like that. What, uh, um, increases my passion for what I do. If you think about uh, how lucky you guys were, you know, of having an opportunity to travel out of your country, right? To leave your country, do something that a lot of kids on your ages are not able to do. We hope that uh, um, this trip to Costa Rica have helped you to open your eyes and let you have a better view of the world, right? And uh, about a different culture. Think about, you know, your future, you know, um, as future travelers, because I know this is not gonna be the only uh, time you travel. So coming to Costa Rica um, and just speaking a different language of Spanish and um, everything that we've been learning, it's been a lot easier than I thought it would be and uh, practicing would be a lot easier than I thought it would be. Like translating at the school and um, just talking to lots of vendors, realize that 
you know, I know a lot more Spanish than I think I do, and that learning it isn't as hard. I could survive down here if I needed to, and that's been really fun. And, and there's always something that might try to make your day a bad day, but I like your attitude. I love that, Frank. And uh, him, I have him. to say, you are one of those real Pura Vida groups. <laughs> so thank you very much, and I want you to give it up for yourselves, my friends. Big applause. Favorite part of the trip? I can't. Let's give it up for Senor Williams. I was just happy to see all these students have such a grand adventure. He meant it. We were all just really tired. We weren't about to leave our two favorite Costa Ricans empty handed though. So Freddie, um, on behalf of all of us, a token of our gratitude, um, we wanted to give you this here. Gracias. Uh, and then also, we, we bought this little book and every single person wrote a page in here really? and filled this out. And so oh. whenever you have some time, which you're a busy man, but whenever you have some time to read that, there's a little note from everybody on Glad the trip. Busy. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much. You. I love you guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. You all have a friend in Costa Rica, see? So thank you very much and I wish you the best for the rest of your lives. So remember, always, every day you wake up, think about this. Pura Vida. Pura Vida! Tanto tiempo disfrutamos Este amor Nuestras almas se acercaron Tanto así Que yo guardo tu sabor Pero tú llevas también Sabor a mí Si negaras Mi presencia 